Good evening everybody and welcome to a new video. Now this one is going to be a bit different from what we normally do. Now see, ever since we've done a few episodes of modded Subnautica, a lot of you guys have been requesting me to show you how to mod Subnautica. How you can actually install these mods and use them yourself, and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take you through all the important steps, so by the end of this you will know how to install and use these mods in your own game. So without any further ado, strap yourselves in, get ready to follow along, and let's go. So here I am on my desktop, everything is fresh. And the first thing we need to do is we're going to need a couple of tools. Now if you open the Subnautica Nexus website, which is where I recommend getting most of the mods because it is also where most of them are located, and you find any specific mod of your choosing, in this case, for example, let's say I want to install the Quantum Teleport mod, which I covered in my previous video. The first thing we're going to have to do is get a tool that will allow us to manage these mods. Now, yes, there is the button that you can click right here, which is manual, which allows you to just download this and extract it into your Subnautica folder. But trust me, this will be really messy and it will make it a real pain to uninstall mods unless you're really careful about it. So instead, we're going to go a different route. Now I recommend registering on this website and creating an account. It's not going to cost you anything, but it will get you access to a whole bunch of features which are really nice, including what you really need, the Vortex tool. Now the Vortex tool is basically a mod organizer. For some of you that have used it in the past, you might recognize it as the Nexus mod manager. And it is a tool specifically used for this website, which allows you to download mods from here and use them into your game. Now of course it works with other mods as well, and it works with a ton of new games, including dozens and dozens which they have on this site, so it's just a really nice tool to have. So we're gonna download the latest version for now. I recommend downloading just the one-click installer, it is the simplest way of doing it. Now it's time to install this app. Now, I recommend you just follow the instructions of the installer. I picked the one where I can choose my location manually, because I just prefer not putting my stuff on my C drive. But this is completely up to you, and all you have to do is just follow the steps until the app is installed. And here we go, we can now complete the setup and run the tool. Now as soon as the tool opens, it might look a bit overwhelming, but don't be scared, we'll get through it. First things first, you need to log in or register using your Nexus account up here. Now once you're in it, I recommend going left onto the Games tab, and in the bottom right, you can click Scan for Games, which will cause this tool to automatically scan for any games on your computer that would fit into, well, this range of games that they support. Technically speaking, you can also do this step manually if you simply select where the games are installed on your PC. Now, for now, I'm going to stop the scan because it has already discovered Subnautica in Subnautica Below Zero, but for now, let's just select Subnautica and click on Manage. Now, of course, this window pops up here, saying you must install the QMod Manager to use mods with Subnautica. So, let's follow the steps for that. Now, QMod Manager is something that is only required for Subnautica, and it basically allows you to, well, do what the manager said, install mods. Scrolling down on the website of the mod, it even explains step by step on how to do this. You just download the file, run the installer, make sure your Subnautica install directory is correct, and you click install, and that is everything. So, we're going to manually download this again. Now, when you try to run it, your Windows might say something along the lines of, Microsoft Defender prevented an unrecognized app. It is fine. This app has been used by hundreds of thousands of people and it is completely safe for your computer. So you can click more info and you can run anyway. Now here we are once again with the install wizard. You can go next and here the important step is to get the correct path for that game. Now funny enough, if you're running Steam on the background, this option will be available to you to get the path from Steam. You can click on Subnautica and it will automatically get the path for where the game is installed from Steam that's running on your PC. Of course, you can click Next, you can choose to install for Subnautica, and you just click Install and there you go. Now effectively speaking, everything is ready to continue. So now, go back down into Vortex and open it up. Subnautica has now been added to the category of Managed. So you can click Activate, which has now put Subnautica into the top left of your screen. You can also launch the game if you click here. But all we really need for now is to go down here and click into Mods. As you can see, this is now empty, but this is where all downloaded mods will neatly show. Be sure you select Subnautica as active so that the mods downloaded are going, well, into Subnautica. Now a quick word before we get into downloading mods, if you want to change some of the settings, 
You can hop into settings and change where the mods are downloaded, where they're stored, if you use several disks, this might be nice for you just to kind of keep things organized. But for now, with everything out of the way, we are ready to get some mods. So let's hop back onto the Nexus website. Now it's your time to go into mods and you can browse all the different options that you have. Let's start with something simple like the map mod and then we're going to move on to the teleporter one because I want to show you something else there. Before downloading any mod, it is quite useful for you to check the requirements of what it has. For this one, all you can see that it needs is the QMod Manager, which we just installed. Now, there are other options that can sometimes be here. Sometimes you can have stuff that the author recommends you use, and other times you can have stuff like other mods that require this particular mod. But in this case, we have everything this mod needs to run, so we can click on the newly appeared Vortex button up here, which once again it will prompt you about what files are required, you can click download, and unless you want to go for premium you're going to have to settle for slow download for now. And what you will notice now is that inside the Vortex app, this has already finished downloading, you can see it in the notifications. Now here is our first mod, it is the map for Subnautica. Now currently it has never been installed, but you can obviously click on it and you can enable it. Now the mod is enabled, however, as you can see in the notifications, for it to be actually deployed, it needs to be elevated. So you click on elevate, and there we go, that's all there is to it. The Subnautica map mod has now been enabled. So let's check out if it works. You can click top left or just go through your Steam to launch Subnautica, and we're gonna see if this mod has been put into effect. Now what you might notice when you open Subnautica options is that there is now a new category called mods. And inside there, you have the QMod Manager, and for some mods that have settings which can be configured, you're going to be able to find those settings here and change them. And now, having loaded into the game, I can press the M key and see that the map has actually appeared. So the mod is activated and everything is functional. Now before we end this off, let's quickly touch on another thing. I specifically picked the Altera Electronics Quantum Teleport mod, because if you click the on the requirements there, it actually has a lot more stuff. This particular mod has two additional requirements as opposed to just the QMod Manager, and those are the SML Helper and the FSC Tech Fabricator. Now the nice thing about these is that you can literally just click on them to open their site, and the same way as we did with the previous mod, you can just download these. And as you can see inside my Vortex, I now have both of the additional mods they requested, the SML Helper and the FSC Fabricator, so let's just enable both of them. And there we go, now all these three mods are installed, we can hop back onto the Nexus website and proceed with downloading this mod. So guys, that is as simple as it gets. Before we wrap this off, let me just quickly say that not all mods are going to work first time around. Remember, you are downloading something that the developers did not intend originally in the game, and just by default, Subnautica is already buggy even without any mods. So some things will just not work and you have to kind of experiment yourself. Usually the Nexus Mods community tab is a wonderful place to go if you're having problems or you sometimes even want to just ask something to the author directly. And otherwise, when you download mods, make sure you endorse them and show some support to the creators. You even have the option to donate money if you like something specifically to show your love because all of these mods are for free and you're not paying a single dime to use all of them. But with that, I'm gonna end this video and I hope you guys enjoyed and have learned at least something new about how to use mods for Subnautica, which will in turn hopefully improve your experience with the game. If you like this video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing, all those would be very much appreciated. And the link to the Nexus website and the QMod Manager will be down in the description should you choose to use them. Now with that, I want to wish you all a beautiful rest of the day, and I'll see you all in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.